and welcome to Central Georgia Focus. I'm your host, Frederick Price. And I got a question for you. What would you do if your child had to spend multiple days, weeks, even months in an out of town hospital? Well, premature births are among uh, common reasons for extended hospital stays for children. Newborns like Mitchell and Daniel Bethel spent the first weeks of their life in the NICU at the Children's Hospital at Atrium Health Navicent. Their cribs were about an hour away in Dublin, but because of the Ronald McDonald House Charities, the Bethel family could remain together free of charge. Really grateful for this really experience. Blessed. It was wonderful and we couldn't have asked for a better situation. Like, I mean, the amount of stress it took off was incredible. And we're going to hear more from the Bethel family later on in the show. But right now we are joined by Kristen McCommon, the events and community engagement manager for the Ronald McDonald House Charities of Central Georgia. Thanks so much for being with yes, us today. Thank you for having me. How are you feeling to be today? Here. Thank you. We were talking about your work and you know your passion for this, but I guess just kind of explain the Ronald McDonald uh, House organization and what it does for the community. Absolutely. So we are a house um, for families that have seriously ill, critically injured, medically fragile children being treated in our area medical facilities. So mm -hmm. like you said, with the Bethel family, um, about 90% of our families are NICU families. So really? they have, um, you know, premature babies that are in the neonatal intensive care unit right down the street at our Beverly Knight Children, Beverly Knight Olson Children's Hospital. And it's always nice to have that resource in the community, mm -hmm. especially for those families that unfortunately have to go through things like that. But why is it so important to have that kind of resource, a big resource mm -hmm. here in Central Georgia for those families? We think about it, a lot of them are traveling in, they've been transferred into our hospital, mm -hmm. um, and they are worried about their child's health. And adding a stress of where to stay, where to eat, I gotta do laundry, how am I gonna pay for all this? Um, you know, we are two blocks away, we have our doors open 365 days, 24 seven to families who need us. You know, I have no parent, I'm only 24 <laughs> myself. I can't even imagine kids right now, but I know that must be a stressful time for parents trying to figure out what in the world are we gonna do to make sure that our children are healthy. So it's a really good thing what this organization mm -hmm. is doing. And I guess who is eligible for this? So any family um, that's outside Bibb County mm -hmm. that is at, um, our children's hospital or any area, um, any medical facility in our area. Mm -hmm. um, they just have to be referred to us by like a social worker or a hospital representative. Um, and we do have an application process um, that will do a little intake and um, you know, they can stay. If they only need a few nights, we welcome them then, but they can stay as long as needed. We had a family actually stay over 300 nights last year. So just shy. Um, by one month of a year, um, wow. they had a little baby, one pound, one ounce, and um, they were with us for a long time. <laughs> Unfortunately, that baby yes. is healthy today. Yes, That's absolutely. To um, you mentioned, we were talking about your passion for this. You started this back in March working for this organization, correct? Yes. And so just tell us a little bit about, you know, why you're so into this and why you're so passionate about this. Absolutely. I um, am fortunate. I have two children of my own. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a background in working with children's organizations, but after having two kids here at the, you know, fortunate uh, hospital right down the road from where I lived, um, I can't imagine what these parents are going through. Mm -hmm. And when your child is going into a NICU and you have no idea where you're gonna stay, right. what you're gonna do, how you're gonna do meals and laundry, and then continue on um, with life back home like if you have other kids or other people, you know jobs um, so we you know I'm just happy to be a little part mm -hmm. of a resource that can provide some rest and respite for these families after their long days at the hospital you may think it's a little part but I bet <laughs> if you ask any of those families they they'll say they are making a big difference and an impact mm -hmm. in our lives one that I'm sure they're going to be grateful for for years. So in terms of the amount of families that you do help, because mm -hmm. I imagine it is a lot, do you have a number of how many families you perhaps help a month? So it varies a little bit by month because again, you could have a family for a few nights and then you could have a family that's been with us month after month after month. So, um, so far this year, we've helped over um, 160 families, mm -hmm. um, which we're so happy to be there. And you know, our numbers are growing um, because the need is there. So. 
we're, we're happy to have them. There's always a need yes. there for sure. Mm -hmm. So kind of give me an idea of what the house looks like if we were there mm -hmm. right now. Kind of just describe what we would see. So we were fortunate enough um, back in 2020 with the support of our community to do an expansion. We expanded from 12 guest rooms to 28 guest rooms. So now we are able to house many more families um, and they will be able to come in. We try to offer a quiet, warm environment for these families because they, again, have been at the hospital, mm -hmm. is stressful, and we want them to have a quiet place to rest and recharge so they can go take care of their child. Um, but they will have a private room um, bathroom and we have two kitchens so um, we provide three meals a day breakfast and lunch are more grab and grow um, because everybody's on different schedules to go see their child in the hospital and then we have amazing volunteers um, and ourselves that provide dinner each night um, so they have a warm meal little comfort food um, we have living areas for them to just you know again relax and I think something really special is um, in the different community areas, people can meet other families that are going through a similar situation. So mm -hmm. it turns into not just being like a physical place of respite, but a nice community where other people can talk and fellowship with someone who is going through the same situation as them. And so this is just one house here in Central Georgia, or do you have many? We are part of, um, of course, Ronald McDonald House Charities nationally. Um, we have chapters all across the country, all across the world. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few others in the state of Georgia, um, but we are the only one here in Central Georgia. And, you know, there we serve a huge, um, like a huge span of counties um, because a lot of the little babies and children are transferred into Macon. So okay. um, we've served 132 counties in Georgia, um, seven states, um, and multiple countries as well. And there's an upcoming fundraiser to my understanding, correct? Yes. Tell me a little about that. <laughs> so we have our annual clay shoot. It's our 18th annual clay shoot um, coming up in October. It'll be October 6th and 7th at the Meadows Clay Sports out in Forsyth. Um, we are thrilled to be doing this event again. It is our largest um, fundraising event, so it's critical to supporting our mission. Um, we have flights Friday morning, Friday afternoon, Saturday morning, so we um, hope everyone will come out. I was going to say, how many people do you anticipate on being there? We are anticipating about 300 oh, um, wow. over the two days, uh -huh. yes. So I bet for you, it's always just nice to see those people come out and support and fundraise and really help this organization too. Absolutely. And for a lot of people, it's a great event because um, it's, you know, you can be a recreational shooter, you can come out with the team, and a lot of people may come out with their company or come out with a sponsor because we're always accepting sponsorships, but. Um, they will learn about us. We'll have a family out there that will share their story. And so it's a great opportunity to, to learn more about what we do. And really talk about how important these fundraisers are too, because it's not just something that you're doing just to do it, you know, <laughs> right. they really have a specific purpose. <laughs> yes. So um, we, when a family stays with us, we do ask for like a small donation. We never turn a family away for their, if they cannot afford a donation because they are of course already going through so much. And so really to operate this house um, and this place of respite for them, we rely on our fundraising events and mm -hmm. our sponsors and our donors and just the support of our community. And we're so thankful for that. And um, this is one big piece of it. Well, I'm always interested to learn more about this, but we do have to take a break. We could talk about this all day for sure. Uh, but when we return, we'll meet the Bethel family from Dublin and the two precious reason to tell everybody they know about the Ronald McDonald House Charities. Welcome back to Central Georgia Focus. We are talking about the Ronald McDonald House Charities of Central Georgia. We want to introduce you to Derek and Heather Bethel, one of the many families grateful for this service. Being here was just so helpful for us because not only did it save us the stress of, you know, having to figure out how to get from point A to point B every day and still make, you know, those really critical touch times and everything, but it also just gave us such a peace of mind of like, if something did happen, that we were literally two minutes away versus an hour away. And 
just being able to, you know, especially like after he went back to work, him be able to come up here after work and us be able to go to like those evening touch times and stay until like, you know, we were crazy. We'd stay till at two in the morning sometimes just to be able to get to spend time with them. And we would never have been able to do that if we were at home because we would have had to then go home after it. So being here just gave us such a peace of mind and so much more opportunity to spend with our babies than traveling up and down the road wasting hours. I only knew it existed because of another family that um, we actually are related to that had stayed here several years ago when they had triplets. And they had told us about it whenever I got scheduled for a C-section at 34 weeks. And then they changed their mind and decided they wanted to come three weeks before that. But um, I did know about it because of that. But the hospital did tell us about it as well. Um, literally like right after I had had them, the doctor had came in and he was like, okay, obviously your babies are in the NICU. They're going to be there at least a month plus, you know, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, what are my options? And they like pretty much connected us with a social worker right away that got us, you know, through the screening process and everything. And we were in here within a day of everything. They did a really good job of setting everything up really quickly. Our experience was absolutely wonderful. I mean, like, I feel like especially like after he went back to work, I got so close to so many of the people here because I was here by myself, you know, going back and forth to the NICU. And, you know, I only had him here with me in the evening because, you know, this was completely unplanned. We had to still continue out our lives as normal, you know, behind the scenes. And so I was really able to, you know, rely on the staff, you know, to just be there as a voice to talk to. And then, you know, I still have families that have been here are still here that I still keep in contact with. I made some wonderful mom friends that were getting it. They were going through the exact same thing we were. You know, they were long-termers in the NICU too. And, you know, like I said, I still have people that I've become friends with. I mean, it's just crazy. I met three families while I was here that lived in the same town as us that I would have never known, never would have met, but I met because of Ronald McDonald and because of us all having premature babies. It's, it's safe and secure. They've, they've got it locked down well, and just having, having your wife and kids you know, over, over here, and you're like me, I, I tried to commute back to work, and I saved a little time for, for now. She's fixing to go back to work, and I, I'm fixing to take my actual leave starting about a week from now. And I was able to save that time because of that, because I felt safe enough to, to have her here. But it... It is just, everything's just been great and really blessed to have this place in, in Middle Georgia. There's so many families, like we've met families from Valdosta that were at a loss and just just the fact that this is here, a, pla a place for them. It's so nice and clean and so many helpful people. Well, the biggest thing I would say is that, you know, number one, learn about it. You know, I, I mean, like I, said, I had never heard about it until like we we got in this situation. But prematurity is so common that it definitely is something that you know. Once you hear about it, tell families about because you never know when somebody's going to need it. You don't plan to have a premature baby. You don't know that it's going to happen. So just you know, once you find out about it, like tell your family, tell your friends. Like I swear, I think I tell every single one of my friends who's pregnant or is going through something about it. You know, whether they're in this area or like I'm from the Atlanta area, tell them about that one because literally, like I had no clue, and you just never know what's going to happen. So I would say, you know educate and inform people about it. But two, just don't be shy. Like I think a lot of people that I met in the NICU, especially that were not necessarily from like quite as far as we were, but they definitely weren't super far. They were almost like scared to ask about staying here because they didn't want to inconvenience anyone. So, you know, don't be afraid to ask. Like the worst that anything could ever say is, I'm sorry, we're full. Don't be afraid to ask, even if you're only 30 minutes down the road, because like I said, for me, that peace of mind of just being two minutes from my babies was, I don't even know if I could have done 30 minutes down the road, you know, and there's not an abundance of hotels right here or anything. And then, you know, the last thing is just, you know, find out how you can help and volunteer. And like, I mean, I know for us, it helps hit home so big because like, you know, we stayed here for 72 days. You know, we packed up our home pretty much, I felt like anyway, and moved for almost three months, you know, for the first little bit of our baby's lives. 
And of course, I want to give back because it hits home. But, you know, I would encourage any church, any organization, any anything, if they're looking for somewhere to give back, that this is definitely a place because you're having real life impact on families. And I can't tell you how many of the volunteers that I had a conversation with just eating dinner or just literally going in the laundry room or just anything. Just, you know, I talked to random people that, you know, it just made sure to always tell them thank you for that because they're taking time out of their days and schedules. But I know personally the organizations I'm involved in, it's definitely been serviced up as a opportunity of somewhere to serve because you're, you're just making a real life impact and you're getting to see the impact you're making in that moment by talking to those families that, you know, you never know what kind of day they've had and just you having a conversation with them might help lighten their load and you just, you know, going around and keeping the, say, the place like clean and safe and everything, you know, that just provides you such a peace of mind because when you're coming back from spending all day in the hospital, you aren't having to worry about, you know, cleaning up, you aren't having to worry about getting food, you aren't having to worry about all that, that's all done and provided for you and it just gives you, takes one less stress off of the already stress you're going through and I can't tell you how much that meant, so those would be my three things I would definitely let people know. If you give a lot of places, you don't know where it's going, you don't know where the money's, you're, you're hoping but you don't know the overhead. And, but if you, you come in and give meals or stuff like that, you know it's going straight to those families. There's, mm -hmm. there's no middleman in that part. That, that goes straight. So any, any help that you can do, it, here you can see, see the benefit from it straight away. Wise words from the Bethel family. They certainly are a strong family. We need to take a break. Because, because I don't want anybody to feel alone when you're going through one of the hardest things you're ever going to go through in your entire life. Mm -hmm. We'll talk with the Bethel family and more about why family volunteers and how you can help the Ronald McDonald House Charities when we come back. Welcome back. We're talking about the wonderful work for the Ronald McDonald House Charities. And we just heard from the Bethel family. Um, we have Kristen McCommons here, the Events and Community Engagement Managers. Now families share their thankfulness by volunteering and giving back to other families. Let's take a look at this. Like I, said, I just, I really firmly believe that that's why all this happened to us is so that God can use us as a resource in other families' lives. Because when you're in this situation, it's so hard to explain to people it's so hard for people to relate and understand exactly what you're going through like not only at the beginning when they're so small and so fragile and so critical but all the way through because you know we've dealt with several complications that were a result of prematurity that aren't resolved yet and just you know even now explaining to people you know they look like healthy full-term babies but they still got some stuff going on on the inside and so just to be able to, you know, be there for moms and dads who are going through the same thing and just, you know, just send them a, send them, you know, a sweet message and just say, you're going to be okay. You know, those babies are so adorable and I'm so happy that they are healthy. The Bethel family are among many families giving back, but volunteers are obviously a big part of the program success. Let me talk about how uh, the organization in terms of volunteering, why it is so important and Absolutely. how you all do that. Yeah, so we um, heavily re rely on volunteers, I think as many organizations do. Um, one of the main things we do is our meal service in the evening. So having those hot meals for families after their long days at the hospital, um, we have volunteers come in and cook those meals or donate those meals. And um, I mean, that is just such a blessing to those families. Um, we have other opportunities around the house, just helping out with various things, keeping the house a nice place for them to stay. Um, and donating items off our wish list. So mm -hmm. that can be from the items you see in our pantry to cleaning supplies to just things that help the families have a nice visit when they are staying with us. And to do all of that, you obviously <laughs> need volunteers. How can people uh, volunteer? So you can um, call our house or go visit our website at rmhccga.org um, and get in touch with one of us. We will be happy to plug anyone in. Uh, well, thank you so much for that mm -hmm. information. And of course, you can participate in the upcoming clay shoot. Mm -hmm. Give us some more information, recap those registration dates and things like that. Yes, so the clay shoot is October 6th and 7th. Um, registration is going on now. 
Um, it's $200 for an individual, and then the corporate teams start at $1,200 and up. So um, we are so excited and so thrilled to have everyone participating and hope to see everyone out there. Um, again, the registration information is on our website as well. Good, good. And are there any other locations around the site too, or are there any locations around Central Georgia, I should say, that people should know about too? For um, the clay shoots? For the clay shoots, it's at the Meadows Clay Sports. So okay. it's up in Forsyth. Mm -hmm. um, it's about 20 minutes from our um, Ronald McDonald house, and they have been hosting it um, since the beginning, and we're so thrilled to go out there. They're great. Mm -hmm. Okay. And those donations, do they go uh, strictly to Central Georgia? Yes. Okay. Yes. So when you are participating in our clay shoot, you are supporting our house that is local here and supporting the families that are at our local hospital. Sounds good. Sounds mm -hmm. good. And so, uh, what's the most important thing you want uh, the community to know and remember about the Ronald McDonald House Charities of Central Georgia, too? Because that is an important piece yes. to this, too. Yes. Um, I think, I would just want people to remember that the families that are staying with us, they are going through one of the most challenging times, if not the most challenging time in their life. Because mm -hmm. when you have a sick child, you know, I mean, that just rocks your world. Yeah. And so, um, whether you can come alongside us and volunteer, donate a meal, um, help at one of our events you know we just love and thrive off the community's support and that's what allows us to serve these families that are going through such a hard time and i'm also curious when these families you know they're going through a hard time they go through the organization they get the help that they need mm -hmm. what are some of the things and stories that you hear when everything's said and done and you know they're waving goodbye thank yes, you i know it's always sad. like we're so excited to see the families leave because that's the goal and um you know, but it's also, you know, we're like, oh, you know, because we've built relationships with these families that have been staying with us and we've kind of been there along their journey. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we're just um, thankful that um, these families w will often come and, um, you know, I think as Heather talked about, give support to other parents. They will stay in touch with each other or come back and give a meal, um, you know, some. Um, will donate a meal or a gift on a certain day that was like particular to their journey, um, maybe a birthday or something. And so it's really special to just see families that have stayed with us continue on um, afterwards. I bet that is it's so really special. Now, yes. We obviously talked about, you know, what's happening here in Central Georgia, but how many other Ronald McDonald houses are in the state of Georgia in total? So we, there are um, two houses in Atlanta, mm -hmm. a house in Augusta, and Savannah. Good, good. Mm -hmm. And is there, I guess, any efforts to maybe expand those locations in the future, perhaps? Um, I think the Atlanta one, they are, of course, expanding right now with the new hospital up there. Mm -hmm. So that's really exciting. I think, really, we all kind of um, build upon the needs that are in our community. We share ideas. Um, you know, it's really great to kind of have be able to collaborate with other chapters on um, what they're doing and how they're serving families and what they've seen is really helpful and benef beneficial. Okay. So it's really great. I did, that does yes. sound great. Mm -hmm. And um, can you recap the fundraiser and those dates and all that important information that people need to know too? Absolutely. So our clay shoot is October 6th and 7th at Meadows Clay Sports and um, registration is going live and you can follow um, you can find the registration on our website. Well, thank you so much yeah. for being here and talking about this important topic and just the things that the Ronald McDonald House is doing for this community, not only here in Central Georgia, but as well in uh, Georgia in general. So I really do awesome. appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, that wraps up Central Georgia. We'll see you next time. Have a good day.